In this video, let's take a look at the impact of the assumed relationship between recovery rate and the probability of default on the estimates of measures such as expected loss and the credit war. To understand the impact of this relationship, let's take a step back and quickly recap the background slash the context. I'm assuming here that I am in a very simple situation as far as my positions are concerned. I have made a single loan to let's say a borrower and I am now trying to model the loss that I'll realize on this loan just in case my borrower were to default on the promised interest payments and or the principal payment. So therefore I can model this random loss to be the product of three inputs and these are number one the exposure at default I can think of this exposure amount to be the total dollar amount that I stand to lose assuming a zero recovery if my borrower were to default this exposure amount can be tricky to compute if this position was a complex position such as let's say a derivatives position but I am in a very simple context here and this is the case of a single loan. So therefore the exposure for me is let's say the total principal of this loan on, on top of it I can also add any interest payment which was due from my borrower okay. So it's the exposure amount that times the loss given default so here in this input called the loss given default an input which is expressed on a per dollar basis I am basically expressing this reality that the entire exposure is not lost I do end up recovering a portion of this exposure because there might be collateral which was backing the exposure and when I go and liquidate the collateral let's say I were to sell off the collateral then the proceeds from selling off the collateral can help me reduce the total amount which I lose in the event of default okay this loss given default I can also write it as 1 minus the recovery rate then the third input is a Bernoulli random variable x which takes a value 1 if default were to happen and a value 0 if default does not happen. The probability that default happens that means x takes a value 1 let that be equal to the PD the probability of default of my borrower okay. Now in writing down the expression for the expected loss which is let's say the probability weighted average of this random loss we make a couple of assumptions and these are number one we make this assumption that we are talking about a position here for which the exposure is relatively easy to compute it does not vary that much and therefore in what follows I can treat this exposure amount to be rather a constant or more or less I should say deterministic okay next the loss given default which I know in its true sense is a random variable random because I do not know what kind of values what kind of market prices my collateral will be able to fetch in this simple formulation I make this assumption that this random variable LGD is independent of this random variable X so if LGD and X are independent then the expected value of LGD times X can be taken to be the expected value of LGD let's call it LGD bar that times the expected value of X which is we know for a Bernoulli random variable equal to the probability that X takes the value 1 which is the probability of default this leads us to this formula for the expected loss that we know quite well and that's expected loss is equal to the product of the exposure times the mean or the expected value of my loss given default that times the probability of default now in reality however this assumption that LGD and X are independent is not true and that is the focus of this video in reality what we observe is that LGD and X these are positively correlated
when x tends to take the value 1 that means default of my borrower is highly likely we are talking about therefore market related scenarios in which the prices of assets will be depressed prices will be quite low as compared to maybe their fair prices because of depressed prices for assets any collateral which I try and sell in this market will not fetch me the fair price. It will fetch me prices which are lower than the fair price and therefore the LGD tends to be higher. Recoveries tend to be lower, LGD tends to be higher. So X high, LGD high indicating a positive correlation between LGD and X. X high, recovery low indicating a negative correlation between recovery and X. Now, if we were talking about another model, and that is the Mertens model, then remember that the Mertens model does not make this assumption that default, or let's say the probability of default, is independent of the recovery rate. If you remember in Mertens model, the key dynamic variable that determines default is the level of the firm's assets. Remember this, that as the level of the firm's assets at any time t were to increase, then it means that the probability of default, which means the probability of the level of the assets at time capital T, which is the maturity of my debt, falling short of the promised value of the debt. Okay, the probability of this event is the probability of default. If a t increases, the probability of default as described by this expression it decreases okay if at increases it means that we are talking about market related scenarios in which the prices of assets in general are high and therefore the recoveries that we'll be able to realize just in case default were to happen tend to improve Okay, or we can say the loss given default, it tends to go down. So therefore, the Mertens model via this common variable AT tells us that yes, indeed, there is a positive correlation between probability of default and LGD and a negative correlation between probability of default and the recovery. Okay, so if this is indeed the reality, let's take a look at what kind of impact this will have on the formula which we usually use okay or, or for that matter the results produced by this simplified formula so let's take a look at first the impact on the expected loss which we know is used to compute the provisions or let's say the reserves now if the LGD and the X are positively correlated we will be making a mistake if we write down the expected value of LGD times X to be equal to the product of the respected expected values something which we did in our simplified formula so this is actually this equality is not really true what is actually true is that the expected value of LGD times the X is equal to the expected value of LGD times the expected value of x plus another term which we have ignored in our simple formula and this another term is actually the covariance between LGD and x. If the correlation between LGD and x is a positive correlation that it means that by ignoring this term I have actually biased the estimate of the expected loss downwards because I am only taking into account this term I am not taking into account this positive term okay so therefore the number which I get by using this very simple formula this one is actually a lower number than what I should have in reality okay then how about the impact of this independence assumption on the credit war and on my therefore capital now let's begin by taking a look at the behavior when we indeed do work with the independence assumption I'm assuming here that I am working with the Basel 2 formula if you remember the formula which we use for computing credit war in the Basel 2 framework very simply credit war in that framework is the product of the exposure that times some kind of an LGD input 
that times the difference between a worst case default rate a default rate that has been estimated at a given confidence level the confidence level which is specified by the regulator that minus the probability of default the normal case probability of default okay if i was really basing my capital based on this credit war then if a downturn were to come that means rating downgrades were to start happening then my estimates of the probability of default for my borrowers it goes up as this pd goes up the worst case default rate it also goes up the worst case default rate formula if you remember it involves the norm inverse of the pd okay this is a negative number if pd increases it becomes less negative and the distance to default actually decreases okay so it's n inverse of pd plus you have square root of rho that times n inverse of the confidence level the whole thing divided by square root of 1 minus rho and i take the cdf i mean the area to the left of this number for the standard normal distribution so if pd increases that means that this number becomes less negative which means that the worst case default rate it increases by a lot more than this increase in pd so overall my credit war increases as the credit war increases and hence my capital requirements go up it becomes more expensive now to make risky loans and therefore banks what they do is they immediately put brakes on credit supply okay and therefore overall credit supply in the market goes down so any downturn which triggered this entire reaction becomes even more severe because the credit supply in the market has been further let's say reduced okay this is what we refer to as a pro cyclicality behavior okay now if i were to assume that my bank was using the advanced irb approach in this approach the lgd input to this credit war formula is also in the hands of my bank the bank can change the lgd input if the bank then were to let's say incorporate this positive correlation between pd and lgd between x and lgd i mean then as the pd starts to increase the bank will increase the lgd input as well so when the lgd input goes up along with the pd and the worst case default rate going up the credit war increases even further this means that the capital calculations when the relationship between lgd and pd has been properly accounted becomes even more sensitive to changing economic conditions so as my downturn comes the credit war increases by a lot more than what it does for the case when lgd is held constant okay so because of this relationship between lgd and pd the pro cyclicality behavior becomes even more extreme so just to quickly recap what we've discussed in the normal case in our simple model we assume that the recovery slash i can say the lgd is independent of the x but in reality we know that there is a positive correlation between x and lgd or you can say a negative correlation between x and the recovery rate if you were to incorporate this negative correlation between x and recovery rate into your calculations you will find that your expected loss number will go up which means that that your current estimate is biased downwards and you will also see that your credit war will also go up okay and you will see that pro cyclicality behavior becomes even more extreme okay